And now, oh my god, it's Matt's. Uh, good evening, this is Matt <laughs> speaking. <coughs> so tonight I'm going to talk about MRuby. And uh, so tonight, tonight I'm not, go not going to talk about uh, the, the other talks, like uh, next slide please. For example, the Ruby 3 or stream, so if you want to ask about them, so the, we have QA session afterwards. So the, tonight we are focusing on the MRuby. So next slide, please. So M, M in MRuby stands for maths or embedded or minimal in the modular or uh, the every, all of them. <laughs> so M stands for those. So let's look, look at it one by one. So the next slide, please. Maths. <laughs> the, this is my so the. Although I originally uh, de developed the, the C Ruby or the MRI in short, the, so then uh, it's up, I open sourced it in '95, and uh, the often called Maths Ruby interpreter or MRI in short. But uh, in fact, the the my Ruby, <laughs> the my virtual machine was uh, up to 1.8. So since the version uh, 1.9, Ruby 1.9, so we replaced the virtual machine. Next slide, please. Uh, call named YERV. So YERV stands for the yet another Ruby virtual machine. <laughs> <laughs> the, at, the, at the beginning of the, the, this millennium, <laughs> Uh, the, there were several attempts to create the Ruby virtual machines, the faster Ruby virtual machine. And uh, we have at least four or five attempts. But uh, the, everyone, the, all, of the, all of these attempts failed, but one. So the, this one, yet another Ruby virtual machine, succeeded, so then they merged into the uh, Ruby 1.9. So since then, the virtually uh, the the Ruby interpreter is not the the Maths Ruby interpreter just because the virtual machine was replaced. So the technically speaking, we have to we 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 don't encourage to call it M MRI but C Ruby because it's implemented in C. So the we have J Ruby implemented in G, uh, Java. So we have the C Ruby implemented in C. So the project M Ruby starts in uh, 2010 and open sourced in 2012. And uh, it's next slide, please. Project started 2010 with uh, the MIT grant. MITI grant. Uh, MIT stands for next slide, please. Okay, the MIT stands for the Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry of Japan. So the the Japanese government. Uh, had a, some kind of project to encourage new industry in the, the non-metropolitan area. It means the non-Tokyo area. And the, the, the Fukuoka local government uh, they raised their hands to uh, encourage the industry, the IT industry, using the Ruby technology. So the, I was joined the, that project and then, so the, what I say? I, I joined the project, then the project started in uh, 2010, and it took us two years to implement uh, the, the new virtual machine suitable for embedded systems. And then, next slide please. But the, the most difficult part is proceed government to make it open source. <laughs> because, you know, the forgotten, to, to the people in the government, so the, the software is the, some kind of the property. So the, they claimed that if go, uh, we develop the software in, using the government money of the, from the government, so 
they have to utilize them or sell them the, 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 to make money. <laughs> but uh, you know, the, we persuaded them so to build industry, to encourage industry. So this is very crucial to make it open source. And, uh, and uh, they finally accepted. <laughs> And then we made it open source in 2000, uh, 2012. Then, next, next please. The, uh, next slide, please. What they were. OK. And then the, there's a language named Lua, which is uh, for the same uh, similar purpose, like uh, the embedded systems, the smaller footprint uh, virtual machine. So I investigated the Lua in, uh, interpreter, and then I designed virtual machine that slightly influenced from uh, the Lua with, uh, next slide please, with somewhat better API. And then, then I confirms most of the, the Ruby ISO standards. Thus, the M Ruby, M in M Ruby stands for embedded. That means it has the better API. So, she, she Ruby has also has a C API, but uh, that API is designed to enhance the Ruby virtual machine. So you can write the C code to add, add features to, to the Ruby inter interpreter, or the write the, the wrap the, the C library to add, add functionality to the virtual machine. But uh, the C Ruby, uh, it is designed to be embedded in the systems, so the we can uh, the, we write systems like applic or applications. The most of the part is written in C or C plus plus or whatever. Then called the Ruby part. So the Ruby is used to to enhance the ability of the application. So the 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 systems and the application side is a little bit different from CRuby to MRuby. So we can embed uh, MRuby into the systems or devices or applications. Next, please. For that purpose, it should be portable. So portable among the many operating systems. So the MRuby, the, the core of the MRuby is entirely written in uh, C99. So, so the, you don't have to have any specific platform or uh, any specific uh, CPU. For CPU, next slide, please. Uh, MRuby runs on the Intel machine, uh, Intel CPU, or ARM, or MEPS, or Spark, or any other pro uh, the CPU that uh, runs C99. And uh, op for op operating systems, so we already ported them. I ported MRuby to Linux, Android, or OS X, OS X, iOS, Windows, or even without any operating systems. So bare, bone, bare metal uh, board. For embedding systems, it requires the software time, so that the uh, Professor Tanaka explained uh, before. So to, to implement the software time, we implemented a special kind of garbage collection. So the, in the, the language like Ruby, the garbage collection is the most biggest, uh, biggest obstacle for the real timeness, especially the past time. So the, in typical implementation of the garbage collection, it's the, during the, the collection of the garbage, so the, the application stops. So the better, you know, the when, for example, in controlling the robots, the robot stops in the middle of the step, it falls down, probably. So the, the, the garbage collection pass time should be very, very small. So to, up, to accomplish that, we implemented the generational incremental garbage collection. So the, it is, yeah, the, the latest CRuby has the, the, this kind of the generational incremental garbage collection, but it, we had uh, implemented that the two year prior to CRuby. Anyway, minimal. So the we to embed it to be embedded. So it should be the very small memory footprint. So the 
in devices, on, in devices, the memory is the most, uh, the tightest resource of the, uh, the systems often. So the, we implemented, we separated the compiler and the virtual machine and the, the libraries. So the, as, yeah, as yeah, Tanaka-san said, so we, sep we can separate the compiler from virtual machine. So the we requires 150K in minimal or the specially crafted uh, stripped down version of the uh, MRuby runs on the Lego Mindstorm and NXT, which has only 48K. So, but uh, it only has, it, it doesn't have strings. <laughs> I don't know, Ari. <laughs> it only has numbers. <laughs> but that, that is too small, though. But uh, the usual, usual normal version of the MRuby is, uh, uh, runs on 150K. And then that probably that runs on, the, on, I don't know, maybe 10, 10, a uh, couple dozen, uh, couple, couple, I don't know, tens or 20, 10, 20 lines of programs. But, uh, it, it, it actually it runs <laughs> anyway. Then, then modular. So the we designed the MRuby as modular. So compilers, virtual machines, and libraries. So we can separate them. So the we com we compile programs into bytecode. So the we we can add the, the separate the virtual machine only or add a new feature with the uh, uh, other libraries. The next, to accomplish that, we implemented a special kind of library packaging uh, named MRB gem. It's a counterpart of the Ruby gems. But uh, we, the, since MRuby does not have a dynamic loading library, just because it's out of C99, so it is statically compiled into the, uh, the virtual machine. So, and uh, we crafted the new tool to handle uh, the MRB gem, the tool named the mgem. So it's, it can be introduced by gem. So the gem installs mgem, installs mgem tool. Then it, the mgem asks mgem to download the list of the MRB gems. Then we, we can ask the mgem of the size of the number of the uh, MRB gems. As of today, we have the 166 gems from the accessing database, accessing a network with sockets, or uh, several data structure, uh, even the, the interface to the open CV, uh, open CV. So we have a lot of things we, using gems. So you, you can download and compile MRB gem like this. Yeah, you can download from the GitHub, then compiles, Next slide, please. Then edit the, the config, build configuration by the build config.rp file. Then type rake to compile everything. Then you, you have several binaries to test the M MRB. MIRB is the uh, interactive Ruby shell for MRB. Or the, in addition, we have MRuby uh, binary, which is the counterpart of the Ruby programs, or MRBC, which is the uh, MRuby compiler, so that compiles Ruby programs into the bytecode. You can build a library, so the, that includes the gems and the, the virtual machine, or you can easily cross compile. The MRuby is 1.9 compatible, so we are gradually moving forward to Ruby 2.0, but uh, the, it, it takes time adapting to two point gradually, yes. So the use of the uh, MRuby, MRuby applications. The, the most typical one, most popular ones, the mod MRuby and Nginx MRuby and H2O. H2O is the, stand, uh, the web server, I will explain later. So the, the, those are the Ruby in web servers. So the, you can control the control and configure web servers using Ruby programs. So you don't have to, so the, you can use Ruby to configure, so you don't have to the tackle with the, say, mod rewrite or something like that. So you can write, 
uh, you can avoid this uh, the, the cryptic XML configure file. Just Ruby. Just use Ruby. And then uh, mod MRuby is faster than mod Lua. And then and the nginx is even faster. Actually, the nginx MRuby is the fastest Ruby web server. So by by factor of, I don't know five or ten or something. So and the H2O is the the recently developed the fast HTTP version two web server that comes with the MRuby by default. So the the, the another example of the Ruby uh, embedded application is a Sid Meier's Starship, which is the the civilization series, <laughs> like this. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the it's it's AI and the rules can be conf uh, it's configured by the MRuby. Yeah, I don't think you can write uh, MRuby. You can write MRuby to configure the game, but uh, the game maker uh, make uh, can be productive to to enhance games in using MRuby. Other systems, for example. Uh, QPS Labs in back in Japan, it plan to embed MRuby into the micro satellites. Micro satellites is the satellite of the big, this big, this big, about the, I don't know, half half feet, the big cube. Then it is, it is piggybacks on the the huge satellite rockets. Then you know. In the in the out of the atmosphere, so it in, it deployed into the orbit orbit and uh, goes around the, the the satellite orbit for a year or two, that uh, scanning and sensing and then the transmitting data. But uh, the every satellite has similar hardware configuration, but. Uh, the purpose of the satellite is different from the satellite to satellite, so the, the it's up to software. So the make software development productive, QPS Labs decided to use Ruby to configure these uh, modules, sa satellite modules, sensing, the uh, controlling, orbit controlling, and everything. Then you can control the, the whole satellite systems in. Ruby. Then the next application is a router. The, the company named IIJ in Japan, so the sales, uh, the internet router that comes with MRuby. The MRuby provides the user interface, the character-based user interface to, to router. So you can access uh, router uh, by terminal or web, web app access. Then MRuby responds, and then the company named the CloudWalk in Brazil. So the the sales, the payment devices like uh, the credit credit card reader, the the software is uh, entirely developed by MRuby. So the, the using this kind of technology, so I believe, yeah, we can MRuby can so beat the Lua or Tickle or JavaScript in the, this kind of the field, like uh, embedding in the devices or embedding in the applications. So the, we have the whole bunch of opportunity to be productive and then uh, and go make the hardware controlling much easier using Ruby. So the, this is about the, the uh, my plan uh, plan and hope for MRuby. And uh, thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matt. Um, Laura, how are we doing on time? Do we have time for a couple of questions? We have a time for a handful of questions. Well, uh, it's it's kind of difficult for, to difficult to measure the latency. You know, the 
the whole throughput is much easier to, to measure, but uh, the, in the software the same systems, so it's, it's quite difficult to measure. So, so, but, uh, you know, the, our incremental garbage collector collects, uh, I don't remember the number, by, def by default configuration, so it collects 200 objects at a time, so it would take the uh, one milli or two millisecond up for a, for a at a time, so you don't have to worry about the pass time. Uh, on, on Linux, <laughs> on Linux PC. So the, on, on the, the machine like uh, the NG board, it would take uh, two or three times longer. Mm -hmm. uh, the syntax-wise, the the MRuby is the almost fully compatible to to the to Ruby, so you don't have to worry about the the subsetting the language. But uh, the feature-wise, the we have the very few classes. Like uh, the by default, the core of the MRuby does not have any file I/O or any socket I/O or the, the even regular expression. So that we have to uh, configure to add those features using gems. So we have the regular expression gems and the file I/O gems and the socket gems and, and, and the other gems. To, so adding those gems, the, the functionality is getting s s big, big, bigger and uh, similar to C Ruby. Yeah, uh, yeah. Last RubyConf, uh, so I gave a presentation about the, the kind of the kind of static typing of the Ruby language it is going to add in the be added in the Ruby three, which is we call the soft typing. The soft typing is the 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 kind of the so, uh, static typing, but with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, global static the code analysis. With, and uh, without any type notation, uh, just because the, I don't like type notations, just because you know it's kind of duplicates. You know the the Ruby program runs with uh, the type any type notation, so the adding that is kind of duplicates. So I I don't like that. So the in future Ruby soft typing, so the Ruby programs uh, an analyze the whole s uh, programs, then they find the contradiction between the uh, between the type, uh, the, like a method call or the, the assignments or the, those kinds of inference. So the, if you find if if the compiler finds that any contradiction. The, the compiler will warn. And uh, if the, the type inference cannot solve those problems, it just runs as the normal Ruby without any static typing. So I, it's not 100% uh, precise, but uh, it, it will find maybe 80, 70 to 90% coverage, I believe. So I'm experimenting on it. And, uh, I, but uh, my my type inference system doesn't <laughs> doesn't run yet, so so we will see. Last yeah, crystal language is a very uh, interesting approach, and uh, so I believe the it is very. What what I say, so we 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 can have hope to having yeah, adding static typing to the language, but at the same time, so the the crystal type systems is a little bit different from my ideal type system. For example, the, the we have to uh, declare some some 
uh, types in in the crystal language. For example, the you can de uh, declare types for the empty array or other some ambiguous part. So that or the and the crystal type system is nominal, but uh, but I want a structural uh, subtype uh, subtyping. And then tho with those differences, so the the Ruby three type system for Ruby three is a little bit different from the type system of crystal language. Dan, I think we have to wrap it up. We have a bus leaving with our delegation from Japan um, in just a few minutes, and we would promise we would not be late. Um, so, Matt, thank you very much for coming tonight. Big round of applause for everybody. And I asked Mats when we were talking about this, was it last year or two years ago? Like, why were you connecting with the city of Fukuoka, Japan, to work on Ruby? Um, and your answer was, I love people who are willing to take risk. And I love that the prefecture of Fukuoka has been willing to take a risk and actually innovate and provide a lot of resources to develop uh, embedded Ruby. And there's not too many governments in the world who have done that. So thank you to the prefecture of Fukuoka for coming and visiting and for helping us provide this to you guys tonight. Thank you so much. And oh my god, it was Matt's, but he's done. <laughs>